Welcome to Daily Conversation. This is Mr. K. This is Eric. Yeah, today is the 25th of December 2021. Merry Christmas. And the time now is 6.16 a.m. Well, today is our reading session and we are going to continue reading the book Eat to Beat Disease. Right, so before we get started, please click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> and and the angiogenic foods boy after foxes walk the urine from Japanese villagers, researchers have confirmed that soy foods contain potent antiangiogenic properties that can be absorbed by the human body after consumption. Large public studies support the benefits. People who eat more soy foods have a lower risk for a number of endogenesis-dependent diseases, from breast and prostate cancer to coronary artery disease. Yeah, uh, the, the second line, yeah, this is the fifth words from behind. Uh, yeah, I think you pronounce one more syllable at the end. Uh, this one is anti-angiogenic, -angio and you pronounce as anti-angiogenic. Okay, yeah. Soy foods represent dozens of different kinds of foods made from soybeans, an ancient legume that originated in eastern China 3,000 years ago. From fresh soy products such as edamame, soy milk, and soy nuts to soy foods that are fermented such as soy sauce, tofu, miso, natto, tempeh, and more. Soy is encountered in many forms. Asian markets will often have fresh soy beans, but you can also often find them in the frozen section of the grocery store. Fresh tofu is versatile and is a common food in Asia. In Western countries, the best sources to find tofu varieties are Asian markets. Look at the menu of a Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, or Vietnamese restaurant. You'll find many soy offerings. <clears throat> soy contains antiangiogenic bioactives known as isoflavones, specifically genestins. Dieting equal and gisolins. Fermented soy products have higher concentrations of them. But dietary supplements called genistin concentrated polysaccharides GCP is a highly concentrated form of genistin and dyson. At the Angiogenesis Foundation, we tested GCP against human blood vessel cells in the laboratory and found it has potent anti angiogenic act activity. GCP can also directly kill prostate cancer and lymphoma cells. Soy bioactive not only suppress cancer growth, but they also prevent growth of the atherosclerotic plaque through their anti-angiogenic activity. Researchers in Asia 
have reported that soy consumption can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by 16%. There is a widespread misconception that women should avoid eating soy because of a belief that the natural plant phytoestrogen cause breast cancer. It's time to overturn this urban legend. Here is the scientific truth. Cytoestrogen in soy do not increase the incidence of breast cancer in human studies. Quite the opposite. Soy phytoestrogen actually act as anti-estrogens in humans, interfering with the ability of estrogen, estrogen to feel certain cancers. And as you know, as you now know, genistin, which is cytoestrogen, phytoestrogen has anti 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 angiogenic cancer starving effects. Among the most convincing epidemiological studies on the benefits, not harm. Of soy is a Shanghai breast cancer survival study, which studied 5,042 breast cancer survivors. During a four year period, the researchers from Vanderbilt University documented and correlated the amount of soy these women consume with recurrence of and death from breast cancer. If there were any potential for soy to be truly harmful, it would appear in this population of women. Instead, what was found was that women with the highest level of soy intake had a reduction in their risk of cancer recurrence by 32%. Their risk of mortality was reduced by 29%. This beneficial association with soy was seen regardless of whether the woman has estrogen receptor, receptor positive or negative breast cancer. Yeah, the last line, the fourth words. Uh, this one, when it is plural, uh, it is pronounced as women and you pronounce as woman. <clears throat> uh, so what is the correct one? Uh, the correct one is women. Women. The next chance you have filled up on soy. The amount that's beneficial to health in human studies in 10 grams of soy pr protein per day, which is found in a cup of soy milk. The human evidence shows that having soy foods in your diet is associated with a reduced risk of breast cancer. The, the more soy consumed, the lower the risk. Soy has further benefits, as vegans know, by being an excellent source of protein Soy is also common in many pre-made pre -made and packaged commercial foods, but it is unclear whether soy used as a filter has the same benefits as fresh or fermented soy products. So I don't recommend choosing highly processed foods simply because soy is listed as an ingredient. Go instead for soybeans soy milk, tofu, or traditional soy products found in Asian markets and restaurants. If you've never explored soy-related dishes like tofu on the, on the Asian menu, you now have a strong reason to start. Soy can starve your cancer and feed your health.
tomato, popularly viewed as a culinary vegetable, but technically a food. The tomato originated in Mesoamerica, where it was used for traditional cooking in Mexico. Spanish congue, con, conquistadors brought tomatoes back to Europe and also introduced them to their colonial territories throughout Asia. The Italian word pomodoro means golden apple. So the first tomatoes seen by Europe were most likely yellow orange color, not red. Selective breeding by botanists later generated tomato cultivar that are bright red, perfectly round and smooth skin. In the early years, Europeans used tomatoes only for decoration, believing mistakenly the fruit was poisonous because of their association with the deadly nightshade genus Solomon. In Italy, peasants adopted tomatoes in their cooking, where they eventually became one of the essential ingredients in Italian cuisine. When Southern Europeans immigrated to North America, tomatoes were also introduced to their new home. Today, tomatoes can be found in markets everywhere. You can buy them fresh, canned, concentrated, dried, powdered, made in sauces and beverages. Tomatoes are enjoyed in cousins around the world. From Mediterranean, Mediterranean to American situation. Yeah, the last line, the third word. Yeah, this one is Mediterranean. Yeah, Mediterranean. Ah, uh, yeah. Far from being a poisonous fruit, tomatoes contain useful bioactives, especially carot carotenoids, lycopenes, rutin, and beta, beta cryptozathin. Of these, lycopene is the most important because it has shown it has been shown to potently inhibit angiogenesis. While all of the tomato contains lycopene, the skin contains three to five times more lycopene than the flesh. So cooking your tomatoes with the skin is with the skin on is the way to go for health. Cooking is, in fact, an important factor for getting the most of your tomato. Lycopene in its natural state that occurs in a tomato on the vein exists in a chemical shape called trans. Unfortunately, trans lycopene is rather poorly absorbed in the body. By cooking the, the tomato, though, the heat converts the lycopene structure from the trans structure to the cis, cis structure, which is which in fact is readily absorbed by the body. Cooking also releases more lycopene from tomato cells, which increases its concentration in tomato sauce or tomato paste. Lycopene is fat soluble which means that it dissolves easily in oil. If you cook a tomato in olive oil, the amount of lycopene absorbed, absorbed by your blood goes up threefold. 
Epidemiological research confirms the health benefits of tomato. More than 30 studies have shown the pro protective effect of tomato consumption on prostate cancer. The Harvard Health Professionals follow-up study ex examines 46,719 men for lycopene's intake and found that consuming two to three cups of tomato sauce per week is associated with a 30% decreased risk of prostate cancer, which is consistent with the anti antigenic effect of lycopene on cancer. In the men who did develop prostate cancer, those who ate more tomato sauce were found to have less antigenic and less aggressive cancers. More than 1,000 cultivars of tomatoes exist, and the amount of lyco lycopene in each varies greatly. So, which ones have the most anti-angiogenic activity? A study of 119 different types of tomatoes show that cherry tomatoes have 24% more lycopene than other types of tomatoes. The San Marzano, Mar Marzano tomato and heirloom, heirloom, heirloom variety originating from San San Marzano, Mar Marzano, Italy, on the slopes of the volcano and volcano Mount Vesuv Vesuvius also has one of the highest lycopene levels among tomatoes. It also has a strong distinctive taste, which makes, which makes it perfect, fresh, canned, and even as a paste used for cooking. A yellow-orange heirloom, heirloom called the tangerine, Tomato is noteworthy because it naturally has high levels of cis, cis lycopene that is more absorb, absorbable in the gut. A clinical trial conducted by researchers at Ohio State University <clears throat> found that tomato juice made from the tangerine tomato was 8.5 fold better absorbed it in the blood than juice from ordinary red tomatoes. The tangy sweet flavor of tangerine tomatoes makes them worthy for foodies and health seekers alike. Red black skin tomato have more lycopene than red tomatoes and more than 1000 times more than yellow tomatoes. Ripe tomatoes should feel heavy in the hand and be formed with a slight dip when gently squeezed. They should have a sweet smell. Keep fresh tomatoes at room temperature, away from direct sunlight, and eat them within a few days of picking them off a wind or bringing them home from the market. Yeah, uh, the last line, uh, the seven words, this one is bringing, yeah, you pronounce as bringing. Okay, bringing. Anti-angiogenic vegetables. Broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable and a member of the brassica family of plants. These include broccoli, rape, bok choy, cauliflower, and romanesco. Broccoli originated in Italy. 
it contains potent antiangiogenic bioactives like racinin and safflophane. Consuming one to two cups of broccoli per week is associated with a reduced risk of many cancers. Studies from the, uni from the University of Chicago, the University of Minnesota, Harvard University, and the U.S. National Institute of Health show that eating broccoli is associated with a reduced risk of non-Hodgkin's Hodgkin's lymphoma by 40%, lung cancer by 28%, breast cancer by 17%, ovarian, ovarian cancer by 33%, esophageal cancer by 31%, prostate cancer by 59%, and melanoma by 28%. Kale may be the world's most overhyped healthy vegetable, but it actually deserves its healthy reputation. At least six anti-endogenic bioactives are found in kale, resonant, indo tree, carbonyl, postins, Routine, sulforaphane, and camphoro. Among the many types of kale, is one that is unusually delicious and available in late fall and window and winter markets in North America and Europe. It's called cavolo, new, 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 narrow, black cabbage or lacinato, Tuscan kale, or sometimes dinosaur kale, grown in Tuscany. Cavolo nero is a dark leaf, greenish blue-black varietal that is found in many traditional Italian recipes is a key ingredient in original recipes for, for mice, strons, and ripolito soup, which are both chock, chock full of hearty health defense promoting ingredients. Yeah, the third line, which is the fourth word from behind, and this one is lutein, lutein, and you pronounce as lutein. Lutein. Yeah, and also uh, the the second line from the bottom, the first word. Uh, this one is minestro minestrone. Yeah, and you pronounce as minestrone. Minestrone. When buying kale, looking for bunches with intact leaves and firm, firm stems, stems, cut the leaves away from the inedible, in, inedible fibers stem, then chop or shred, shred the leaves, which then can be steamed, blanched, so, saute. Use in soup or stew or mix into pasta or rice. Properly cooked. Cavallo, Cavallo Nero is very tender. It turns almost black and it has a robust flavor with a mild sweet aftertaste. Anti-endogenic foods. Stone fruits are summer foods known for sweet flesh, 
bursting with juice and a peat. In the center, the, the, stone, the, the stones. You recognize them instant, instantly. Peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots, cherries, mango, and even lychee. A host of anti androgenic and regenerative, as well as DNA protective, which we will discuss later, are active, including carotene, camphoro, mental cyanins, quercetins, and chorogenic acids are, are present in stones' food. Two studies from the U.S. National Cancer Institute and the University of Illinois at Chicago show that consuming two medium-sized stone foods per day is associated with a 66% decreased risk of esophageal cancer and an 18% decreased risk of lung cancer in men. When it comes to choosing stone foods, there are no bad choices, but useful tips that plum at three times the amount of cancer fighting polyphenols compared to peaches. And, at, and in the lab, a carotene called lutein that is found in apricots prevents the formation of the brain damaging beta amyloid. Fibris that are linked to abnormal antigenesis found in Alzheimer's disease. Choose fresh foods when possible because driving can lower the amount of bioactive, although it may be easier to eat more dried foods to make up for the loss per food. Apples are good for you, but knowing which type to choose can be confusing. A number of antiangiogenic polyphenols are found in apples, including caffeic and ferulic ferulic acid, two major nu nutritional epidemiological studies, the EPIC and NIHAARP diet and health study analyze associations between consuming certain fr fruits and cancer. The results for apples are impressive. Eating one apple to two apples per day was found to be associated with risk reduction of bladder cancer by 10%, colon cancer by 20%, and lung cancer by 18%. <clears throat> of the 7,500 varieties of apples grown around the world, roughly 100 are available in the markets, except for their taste and texture. Firm Crispy, sweet, tart, plate. It's hard to know how they differ from a health perspective. Research is now providing the answer. Of the varietals with the highest levels of defense boosting polyphenol, the top three are Granny Smith, Red Delicious, and the Rain the Rainto, Little Queen. Whenever apples are in season, so is apple cider. Cloudy apple cider is superior for health because it retains more bioactives. Clear apple juice, clear, clear apple juices have been filtered, which can remove many, though not all, of the healthy compounds. A male clinic study of 
35,159 people show that drinking two servings per month of apple cider or juice is associated with a 35% reduced risk of non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Seasonal berries like strawberries, ribs, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, and cranberries can boost your body's endogenesis defenses. The intense colors and toughness are uh, tip off the presence of potent bioactive, including anthocyanins and allergic acids, both of which have anti-angiogenic activities. The European prospective investigations into cancer and nutrition, EPIC studies, the diet and health patterns of 478,535 people across 10 European countries for exa examines over two decades for their association with cancer and other chronic diseases including cardiovascular disease. One key conclusion, berry consumption was linked to lower cancer. People eating one feet cups of berries of any type per day were found to have a 22% reduced risk of developing lung cancer. A special raspberry variant is the black raspberry. The dark color reflects its high bioactive concentrations. Clinical trials with black raspberry have been conducted on patients with Barrett esophagus, es esophagus, a precancerous, precancerous lesion to see their effect. The results show that black raspberry make the lesion, lesion less aggressive, reducing the cellular changes that herald the progression to cancer. The same has been seen with precancerous colon polyps. Black raspberry also slow their growth. Blue berries have a dark blue coloration reflecting their anti-angiogenic bioactive delphinidin. Studies of 75,929 women show that those eating one cup of fresh blueberries per week had a 31% reduced risk for breast cancer. As I will show you later, blueberries have a remarkable ability to activate multiple health defense systems. Strawberries are a great source of the bioactive known as allergic acid, which has potent antiangiogenic activity. The tartness of the berry reflects these activities. High levels of allergic disease are found in tree, cultivars, rubidium, originating in New Zealand, Camarosa, from the Ohio Valley, and Osmanli, from Turkey. These varietals are worth seeking out at the market. Despite extreme tartness, Cranberries actually have low levels of allergic acid, but what they do have are high levels of bioactive proanthrocyanins, which also have anti-cancer and anti-angiogenic effect. Seafoods. People who eat seafoods live longer. The impact of eating fish and shellfish on angiogenesis, angiogenesis provides one explanation. Many seafoods contain healthy polyunsaturated fatty acids, 
call PUFAs in their flesh. These healthy fats come from the cytoplankton that fish eat in the in the ocean. Most people recognize that omega-3 fatty acid acid is healthy, but there are actually three main forms of these fat that are associated with health benefits. EPA, acosapentaenoic acid, DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, and ALA, alpha linolenic acid. EPA and DHA can be found in seafood. ALA is found mostly in plant-based foods. Antiangiogenic activity is found in omega-3 PUFAs. However, it's not just the omega-3 PUFAs that play a role in generating health, but the actual ratio, ratio be between omega-3 and another group of fatty acids called omega-6. The number three and six refer to where the unsaturated portion of the fatty acid is located on the molecule. For cancer protection, researchers have found that the higher the overall intake of marine omega-3 omega in the diet, the greater the benefit. In contrast, higher omega-6 PUFA consumption is relation to omega-3 PUFA. The omega-6 to 3 ratio, which comes from vegetable oil, for example, is linked to unhealthy inflammation and an increased risk of disease. Large population studies such as the Singapore Chinese Healthy Study and the EPIC studies have found an association between seafood intake and a reduced risk of cancer. The Singapore study examines the health of 35,298 women and found that eating three ounces of fish or shellfish per day was associated with a 22% reduced risk of breast cancer. The EPIC study showed that eating three ounces of more of fish daily was associated with a 31% decreased risk of colon cancer. The benefits of fish extend way beyond cancer prevention. In the women, women's health study of 38,022 middle-aged women. Harvard researchers found that those who consume one or more servings of fatty fish per week over a 10-year period has a 42% decreased decrease risk of developing age-related macular degeneration, AMD, the most common cause of vision loss in the elderly. Associated with leaky blood vessels caused by destructive angiogenesis, in the back of the eye. A large meta, meta analysis conducted by the Changshu No. 2 People's Hospital in China involved 128,988 people across eight different studies in Ireland, Iceland, the Netherlands, United States, and Australia. The analysis the analysis, the analysis showed that eating fish ranging in frequency from less than once a month to three, four, three to four times per week was associated with a decreased risk of AMD by 24%. The study found differences in protection based on the type of fish consumed. Macro salmon, sard sardines, 
bluefish and salt, salt, salt fish were beneficial and linked to 32% reduction of AMD. Eating tuna was linked to a 42% risk reduction. While they are delicious, the danger with eating tuna, salt fish, bluefish, and other large fish high, high up on the food chain is that they often contain high levels of mercury. So consume these, these fish with caution and only in moderation. Fatty fish should not be an optional food <clears throat> if your goal is better health. If you live along a, a coach, you probably are eating fresh seafood already. But even in lands, folk can buy seafood that has been flash frozen at sea. This captures the beneficial omega-3 fatty acids, which are still present when the fish is towed at home. How to choose the best seafoods is a big question. If you visit the world top fish markets, such as Japan's Tsukiji market, Barcelona Mar 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 market, the San Joseph Villa Boquerio, or Venice, Bacano Dal Peso, your jaw will, will drop. When you see the when you see the dazzling array of fresh edible creatures that are pulled from the sea every day, amazing fish, crustaceans, crustace, crustaceans, and salt fish of diversities unmatched anywhere else. To help you navigate the assortment of seafood you encounter in a fish market. I've compiled a list of frequently encountered seafoods based on their level of omega-3, PUFAs, and their common appearance in markets and on restaurant menus. To generate this list, I surveyed the, world, the world's top fish markets restaurant menus and fisheries sustainability charts then cross re cross reference items with reputable databases for nutrient composition across eight countries denmark france iceland italy japan norway spain united states to extract information on the products with the highest level of omega-3 PUFAs, EPA plus DHA, per, 100, per 100 grams of the seafood. Food lovers rejoice, I've got you back. I've got your back. Delicacies like vodka, squid ink, and sea cucumber are among those with potent anti-angiogenic activities. Here are the top selections of seafood with anti-angiogenic omega trees. Highest level, pig, sea cucumber, manila, clam, big ice tuna, yellow tail, sea base, blue fins, tuna, Cockles, Botago, Roy of the Grey, Mullet, Caviar, Dutchians, Fish Roy, Salmon. Yeah, the last line, the last second word, which is uh, Roy. Yeah, you okay, pronounce as Roy. Roy. High level, greater than 0 0.5 to 2.44 grams per 100 gram. Salmon, red mullet, halibut, Pacific, oyster, 
oyster, gray mullet, sardines, arctic char, char, bluefish, sea bream, Mediterranean sea bass, spiny lobsters, anchovies, pampano, redfish, black, ba black bass, swordfish, John Dory, eastern oysters, squid, rainbow trout. Medium level, pet mussels, striped bullets, octopus, ske scallops, cuttlefish, shrimp and, and prawn, whiting, dried coat, dried base, soy, sole, Atlantic, lobster. Low level, coat, grouper, brown, shrimp, periwinkle, wave, abalone, skate. Yeah, uh, the mm -hmm. last line, this one is abalone. Okay, Ab abalone. One final note on fish. Be careful of tilapia. This domesticated flesh water fish is found on many menus, and its white flesh has a mild flavor, but there's a hidden threat. Tilapia has a high unhealthy rate, unhealthy ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 PUFAs, making it a less desirable fish from a health per perspective. Chicken thigh. Among meats, chicken is one of the healthiest choices. Most of us are used to thinking of breast meat as the best part of the bird because white meat has less fat, but dark meat offers other unique health benefits, especially if it trims off the fat. Research has revealed Thighs and dumpsticks are especially healthy choices. Dark chicken's meat contains vitamin K2 or menaconos, naturally occurring fats, soluble vitamins, unlike vitamin K1, which is made by plants by spinach. K2 is made by bacteria, it has anti angiogenic properties. At Hiroshima University in Japan, scientists studying vitamin K2 discovered that it potently suppresses, suppresses angiogenesis and growth of colon cancer cells. Researchers at the University of Illinois is showed that vitamin K2 could in inhibit both angiogenesis and prostate cancer growth. K2's benefits extend to heart disease as well. People who ate more K2-containing foods had more than a 57% redu reduction in the chance of dying of heart disease and a 52% reduced risk for a severe hardening of the arteries due to the Due to plaque buildup, remember that plaque glows requires angiogenesis, so this association makes sense. Researchers have discovered that menaquinone men also interferes with the body's ability to make cholesterol and can prevent hardening of the, of the arteries as well. So even though you may have grown up accustomed to choosing the chicken breast meat when it comes to health, it's a no-brainer. Choose 
the fla flavorful legs and thighs. Take your ham, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Processed meat is considered processed meat is considered a carcinogen by the World Health Organization WHO. But two meats merits are mentioned because many people do not know they contain beneficial fats. These are prosciutto, the parma from Italy, and Gemmo Iperico, the Pelota from Spain. These two hams come from a different breeds of pig than typical factory farm pigs. They are bred to have fat shrinking throughout their muscles, which makes their meat exceptionally tasty. <coughs> Pamo pigs are raised in traditional fashions where they are fed the weight of Parmigiano, Reggiano cheese as as youngsters, giving the flesh of giving a flesh a nutty flavor, and then they finish with a diet of omega three pufa rich chestnuts. The pufas make their way into the fatty streak of the meat, and the finished product contains healthy pufas, just like seafood. Spanish, Spanish, Iberico pigs are a black food, footed species. They are free range. They are later fed a diet of mega tree pupa rich acorns, which provides a high level of oleic exit, like in ol olive oil, oleic exit facilitates. The generation of HDL, the good cholesterol, while the lower LDL, the bad cholesterol. These harms are air cure and no artificial preservatives of use. Carved into over thin slices on demand, both them are a source of omega 3 pufa. In fact, nice slices of post. Prosciutto di Famo or Gemmo <coughs> Perico di Peloto will give you the same amount of omega 3 pufas, 14 grams, as a 3 ounce serving of, of salmon. <coughs> Is calling prosciutto and Gemmo healthy too good to be true? Yes, just because they contain Beneficial omega-3 PUFAs does not override their downsides. Cure ham is not a health food. Keep in mind that both meats have about twice as much saturated fat as salmon. Both prosciutto and jamun are very high in sodium. They have about 25 to 30 times as much sodium as a serving of salmon, which actually lives in salt water. Jamun has about 30% less sodium than prosciutto. High sodium intake is linked to hypertension and an increased risk of stomach cancer. And as you'll see in the next chapter, salt harms your stem cells. Compared to salmon, Prosciutto also has a higher ratio of omega-6 PUFAs, which is pro-inflammatory. So caution is definitely indicated. Use these facts if you like these hams. If you must, be like the Italian and the Spanish and eat just a little to enjoy the taste. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Make a summary. All right. So, um, for today's part, we uh, 
uh, we kick off with the soy, yeah, the soy and including those foods and also beverages related to soy. And then, um, yeah, it is uh, beneficial. Uh, uh, and then uh, for many cancer, especially for breast cancer. Yeah, so uh, it is suggested to take as much as possible. And also it is lucky that in many Asian cuisine, uh, we, uh, we, can can, we can come across the soil, soil related foods. Uh, easier than Western cuisine. Yeah, and uh, the next one is tomato. And this one, uh, one thing to be uh, careful is that we, when we cook it, and then uh, we need to cook it with oil. Yeah, because uh, uh, it, it, it is kind of like the most uh, nutritional part is the skin. And then we need to use the the oil to cook and then uh, it become more easy to uh, to be digested by us and uh, it is something like oil soluble uh, things and uh, in the tomatoes and tomatoes is extremely good for uh, uh, people especially for men because it can help with prostate cancer and uh, the next one is about broccoli yeah broccoli is uh, uh, very good, and I didn't uh, uh, write down many things for this, and uh, it helped in many cancers. So it is uh, also something like uh, eat as much as you can. Uh, the next one is the kale. Kale, I uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure uh, what kind of uh, uh, dishes this is, and I thought this is something like a soup. Yeah, and then uh, they put in some specific vegetables and then uh, it's a dishes but uh, I think it is not very common in Asia. Uh, kale, uh, mm. kale is actually a vegetable. Oh. Yeah, it's not a dishes. I see. So uh, so it is commonly... No, uh, no, common, no common in Asia. Oh, and I, I, I just... Yeah. Uh, uh, I think few maybe once or two months ago I checked with the... Uh, I checked the supermarkets and yeah. I found I found it I found it but it's very very expensive oh. and mm. I think in Asian country people will not like the texture because uh, it is uh, quite hard and mm. and also it is uh, very difficult to bite yeah mm. in Asian we like to eat the so-called soft vegetable mm. yep or some crispy one like the broccoli. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the next one is about the stone fruit. Yeah. For this one, actually, it surprised me. I have never thought that uh, stone fruit is uh, so good in terms of uh, beating some uh, diseases or deal with uh, some cancer. Yeah, and stone fruit basically is just dough fruit with one big seed inside uh, and then wrapped it by the flesh. So uh, also one uh, I remember here is the plums. Yeah, uh, because it seems like this is, uh, if you don't know what uh, which one to choose, you can choose the plums. And uh, it, it kind of in uh, in some, uh, to, the, to some degree, this is uh, kind of the best. And... Uh, the next one is apples. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, you go ahead first. Mm. Oh, all right. Mm. Uh, the next one is also fruit, which is apple. And then uh, I think we heard this quite uh, quite often, which is like uh, one day, one apple, keep the doctors away. Yeah. So uh, for here, I read that uh, one to two apples per day is uh, also found that uh, beneficial to prevent diseases. Yeah, and also uh, if you couldn't eat apples, maybe you can try apple juice, uh, which can also give you uh, a similar benefit. And the next one is berry and berries. There are many types of berries. Uh, it could be like black raspberry, blueberry, strawberries. 
yeah, um, for this one, I think uh, it is not very uncommon in Asia, but uh, the price is quite expensive. Yeah, for berries. And uh, yeah, the next one is seafood. Yeah, for seafood. Uh, yeah. uh, mm. Yes. Uh, and about the fruits, uh, I think yeah. we need to be aware that, and um, especially for the for for the di di uh, diabetic person. Oh. Or for the pre, uh, or for the pre-diabetic person, they need to avoid this kind of things, especially the fruits because it contains high sugar. Mm. Yeah. So like right. the apple, the, the plums, and also the fruits, even though it's a raspberry, uh, cranberry or or, or strawberry, it also contains uh, the 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 sugar. Mm. Or right. Maybe we should call. Uh, uh, Uterine or something like that. Yeah. Mm. This is the this is the fruit sugar. Yeah. 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 This is an important point because uh, uh also previously I, uh, when I haven't heard people say that uh fruit is high in sugar, um uh at that time I thought that maybe the sugar in the fruit is kind of like, uh not harmful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but that is not true. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mm. And yeah, to me, uh, I seldom eat fruits because to me, fruit is just <laughs> the sugar plus water. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. uh, the fruit is expensive. Mm. Mm. And yeah, even though uh, it may it may help you, and it may improve the health, but uh, most of the time you can replace them. Mm. You, uh, I mean, uh, you can substitute them with the uh, with, with we are the foods. Yeah, like vegetables, cheaper and uh, not high in sugar, right? Mm. Mm. Yep. And uh, next one, which is the seafoods. And uh, for this one, basically seafoods contain, most of the seafoods, including fish, uh, they contain omega-3. And uh, for here, uh, it's, it's about the, the ratio which you mentioned in the last reading session also uh, omega-3 and omega-6 ratio and uh, yeah the uh, the key here is to achieve the balance and uh, so that sometimes we try to consume some foods with high omega-3 is uh, is a good choice um, uh, but, but sometimes it's always <laughs> yeah mm -mm. based on the studies found that it's always Mm, it's, yeah. it's also like uh, mm, just like you say broccoli you can eat as much as possible mm. if you want to compare mm, the extent the extent of eat as much as possible and I think omega-3 is 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 uh, over is over the broccoli oh you can mm. eat tons as much as possible mm. yeah but uh, also be careful of the the sources of your omega-3, right? Uh, also here mentioned, which is those kind of fish, especially the fatty fatty fish. Uh, uh, I, I am not very sure. I think those are the the bigger, the larger fish. And uh, then, no. is it? Uh, it actually, uh, omega-3 poop is actually among uh, many fish, hmm. uh, but, not, but not all fish. Some fish have uh, has higher uh, has higher omega trees too fast, and when you choose a fish, uh, you should avoid the big fish, because big fish that are at a uh, at a higher food chain mm. in the sea, and then uh, they will eat a lot of small sh uh, small fish, mm. okay, and then the mac the mercury Mm. cannot go away and it will accumulate and store in the fish meat or in the fresh uh, or in the fish brand mm. yeah so yep. uh if you have to eat the big fish and then try to avoid to eat the fish head oh. yeah because uh at that part is contained more it, it contains the most uh mercury mm. and if you con if you consume a uh, small fish okay because yeah. 
small fish, uh, small fish like the mackerel. Okay, uh, mackerel also has a lot, a lot of time. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like a hundred, a uh, hundred different varieties, hundred species. Mm. Yeah, mackerel, uh, mackerel, uh, one of the mackerel you should avoid, which is the king mackerel. It is a big fish. Oh. Yeah, king mackerel. Please avoid. Yeah, oh. and oh, is it about the the mercury? High mercury. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because it's a big fish, and mm. like the uh chivalries and the very very small fish that in Chinese we call the jiang yu zai. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, but of course uh uh this is not the uh you shouldn't you shouldn't consume too much the the processed ones which is the the salty the salty uh chivalries. Mm. Uh, uh, I forget the pronunciation is maybe the the the, the or something like that. Okay, and yeah, you can eat a fresh one and don't uh, or maybe uh yeah, you also can you also can eat the dried ones, but mm. I think the fresh one is the best. Mm. Mm. And the small fish because they are at the they are they are at the lower food chain, so they don't eat uh they don't eat the I mean, sir, their their food their food source their food sources is contain lesser mercury oh, compared to the big mm. fish, much lesser. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your sharing here. I really don't know. And how about the skin, uh, of the big fish? Because I also heard my father say that, uh, if it is the kind of like the big bigger fish don't eat the skin too much also beware of the mercury i'm not sure about this oh hmm. yep so uh uh when we consider big bigger fish larger fish then uh yeah we need to uh, be aware of this and so that just now you also mentioned uh maybe smaller fish is uh another good choice uh, maybe is uh you can say always. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just now, uh, those fish categories they talk about. Uh, some fish have high omega three. Um, some of them are small, small smaller fish, right? Uh, I, almost all of them are. Yeah, I miss uh, Yeah, yeah. Some of them are smaller fish. Uh, but uh, the author mentioned here, macro, sardines, tuna. Mm. All of this is small fish. Mm. Uh, yeah. Just about the macro, you need to because macro is a big is a big category. You need to avoid the big fish. So the 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 it's very easy, very very simple. Just avoid big fish. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right, and then uh, other than these uh, some. Some other things like uh, sea cucumber, uh, squid, uh, yeah, and some others also. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah squid and this is this is uh, not common in Asian, uh, but I think the uh, this is quite common in Korean, mm. in, in Korea, Ooh. and maybe in Japan. But this is very very expensive in Asia. Mm. Uh, is this referring to the creature or just the ink? Uh, squid ink. Uh, yeah. Uh, here mentioned about squid ink. Mm. Oh, yeah. So it's, I think, it's the I think name it's of the, the creature, right? Uh, what do you mean, squid ink? I uh, I'm not sure is whether is is the is the black color ink. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Is is that one? Is like the black color. You know oh. the squid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I have never. Uh, eat any of them, so I don't know whether uh, they are kind of like containing the ink inside the squid and then uh, also yep. eaten by us. Uh, because squid will, will spread the ink, right? Mm. Yeah, the, the black color one. And maybe um, they have some way to 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 take out from, from, from the dead squid or maybe they yeah, they kind of like uh, uh, grow it, uh, uh, grow it in the labs, grow it mm. in the in the farms, and yeah. then uh, like uh, just like the, just like the cow, 
uh, the kettles mm. and and you and uh, and you kind of like the, get the milk from the cow <laughs> and get yeah. the chicken egg get the egg from the chickens. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure, mm. but here refers to the squid ink. Mm. Yep. All right, and then uh, the next one I think uh, is go to chicken. Yeah, for chicken here, it's uh, especially mentioned chicken thigh, uh, also the, the drumstick. Uh, kind of like if we talk about health perspective, and chicken thighs uh, uh, is also a good choice. And uh, previously, I thought maybe the chicken breast is the best part of the of the chicken. Uh, but now I know that chicken thigh is actually uh, is also uh, nutritional yep and then uh next one is about the ham and the ham here i think is not the ordinary ham we can buy in the market uh it is uh two of them i i, I remember two of them and then uh from from other country i, I forgot like spanish or what and uh they are good and also they are not good and uh, they are good because uh, the ingredient they use is from a kind of pig which has uh, the good cholesterol. And uh, the not good part is because uh, they are high in sodium. Yeah, they are very salty. So, uh, which is also not good for our body's defense system. So I think in conclusion, ham is not a good choice uh but if you can if you want to choose if you want to eat ham maybe you can choose uh the particular one is better than uh those uh without any maybe without any uh uh good cholesterol yeah so the, uh, these things uh we don't like purposely eat a lot uh, it is not good yeah and yeah i think these are my summary today yeah and uh okay uh about the chicken thigh the author mentioned about the duck meat and mm, yeah I'm not uh, I'm not very I'm not really understand about this because uh, I thought initially I thought uh, we need to eat the dark chicken because chickens we got the the uh a few the, types yeah. Yeah, got built up the normal chicken and also we have like the dark chicken. The chicken is, is dark color. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the whole chicken is the dark color. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the meat also is dark color. I actually uh mistakenly thought the author referred to the dark chicken. Oh, me too. And so think, why is it? Yeah, but actually uh, it came out uh I just did a research is mm. not it's not this. And Okay, and we need to know there are few types of meat. The first is the white, white mm. meat, white yeah. color, and red, mm. and also dark. Oh, white sure. meat, uh, white meat and dark meat are coexistence, are, are coexist in the uh the pro the, the poultry, the poultry, or we or we can say the non uh, non ruminants. Non ruminous animal, for example, like the chickens, birds, mm. Mm. Uh, pig, yeah, and and white meat normally refers to I mean, uh, here for chicken, for the pig, and uh, for uh, for for other for other non ruminous uh, animal, I'm not sure, but for chickens, mm. the white meat refer to the breast. Refer to the breast tender. Do you know why it's a breast tender? Is a uh, in Chinese it's called a ji liu. So ji liu. it's a oh. it's a it's a part of the breast, but it is a, mm. uh, uh, but uh, uh, but the meat is more juicy, and also it is a, uh, uh, more easier to bite. Yeah, the the I mean the 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 meat is not tough compared mm. to the, the the breast. Yeah, the breast tender is uh, it's kind of like some people will say this is the best part 
of the chicken breast. Oh. Yeah, breast tender is a breast is the best part of the chicken breast. Yeah, and breast breast tender and wing is a white meat, and the dark meat refer to the thighs, and also the drumstick. Oh. Yeah, and why they they classify uh, these two parts as a dark meat? Uh, I'm not sure, but I see some some articles say that uh, they call it dark meat because uh, uh, it's uh, maybe it's high in iron. Uh, iron. Yeah, mm, maybe K, K2, I right? just now mentioned K1 and K2. Yeah, and uh, also maybe the, the mass uh, it is, is different. Okay, the mm. texture is different. Yeah, so, uh, but we just need to know the category we, yeah. Mm, yeah and yeah. about the red meat, red meat is the ruminous, ruminous animal, for example, uh, goat, mm. a goat, for example, deer, for example, mm. bear, mm. and for example, like the, the cattle, which is mm. a cow, yeah. yeah, so the beef, uh, the goat meat, yeah, so the sheep meat, uh, the beer meat, uh, deer meat, uh, all of this is the yeah. considered red meat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And what differentiate the non-ruminous and ruminous animals is because of the digestive system. Their digestive system is different. Mm. Mm. If you want to know more, you can, uh, yeah, you can uh, Google by yourself. Mm, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, mm, yeah, I also have nothing to write in. Mm, yeah, and next time maybe you go to, uh, if really you have to, uh, or you want to go to fast food restaurant like KFC, you can uh, tell the seller that you want the chicken thigh. Is better than chicken wings. Mm, yeah. Yeah. If you if you have to eat the uh, fast. Mm. Mm. Yep. But it doesn't mean that you should go to fast food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is not like promote us to eat more. Mm. Mm. Okay. So anything else on the end? Uh no. Okay. So this all for today's conversations. How do you feel? Did you enjoy the conversation? Please tell us what you think of our conversation. And we are not native speakers if you found any vocabulary mistake that we made. Please also comment to let us know because we want to learn more and improve ourselves. Remember to like subscribe to us. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.